Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me welcome our panelists, uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi of the Shiv Sena, its member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha, Deputy Leader. Please give her a big hand. Uh, also joining us is Pangaja Munde, National Secretary of the Bharatiya Janata Party, former minister here in Maharashtra. Uh, Hina Gavit is member of parliament from the Bharatiya Janata Party, representing Nandurbar, and uh, was one of the youngest, if not the youngest, MP India has ever had. And MLA, youngest ever, soon to be MLA, youngest ever MLA, that uh, the state has had, and Praniti Shinde, uh, MLA of the Congress in the Maharashtra Assembly. Okay, I'm just going to redo that introduction so that uh, we have it for television. Uh, women leaders in Indian politics. We have a stellar panel of four women leaders who've carved their own niche for various reasons. On my extreme left is Hina Gavit. She's a medical doctor who at the age of 26 won an election for the first time and thereby became, I think, the youngest MLA that Maharashtra certainly has had. And a member, youngest MP that Maharashtra has ever had at the age of 26. Pankaja Munde is National Secretary of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Priyanka Chaturvedi is Deputy Leader of the Shiv Sena in the Rajya Sabha. And Praniti Shinde is member of the Maharashtra Assembly. Thank you all very much for joining us. You've got a mic next to uh, each of you. Uh, I think it'll be on your, uh, Hina, on your left, I think. Is there a mic? Oh, there's one there. Great. Uh, women leaders in Indian politics. Before this session began, we had a photo shoot with all the four women uh, on the panel. And they had a blast. And it made you wonder that if we had more women in parliament, more women in the assembly, you would have much more fun than we have at the moment. Am I right, Priyanka Chaturvedi, that women make far better politicians in general than men do? You can really make a splash, can't you? Is that even a question to ask? Of course we do. And of course, that's what we fight for. We need more women in the parliament, in the assemblies, to make it not just a, a more a fun place, but we need to make it a more equitable space. We need to have an inclusive space, a progressive space, and women come with all of that. But do the men actually allow you, if I may push that, inside parliament? I always see the men hanging together in their groups, especially those from North India and the Hindi heartland. Do they have space for a woman to actually be part of their, of their biradri in a way, their tribe? Yes, absolutely they do. And I think they look at us with wonder, okay, you know, okay, she is the one who's the other gender and how do we make conversation? But they're getting used to it because you're ensuring that they get used to it. More the women, more the conversations and more the, you know, the barriers that they have created over the years breaking down. Very interesting. Pankaja Munde. You know, you are seen as a, whenever I re read you the sort of so-called rebel within the Maharashtra BJP. And it almost seems if a woman is aggressive, then she could become a rebel. If a man can get away with a lot of things, is it much more difficult for you? And you've had a lot of difficulties in a way taking on the male-dominated establishment of Maharashtra. Honest answer. Of course. That's what people expect from me anyways. Uh, and they're used to it also. Uh, basically, if you would have asked me this question five years ago, I would have answered something different. But my experience uh, of last decade of politics has changed a lot of opinions about things. Because when, uh, how we, we are brought up, we are brought up in a very secured way. So I always thought I am not the victim. I am not somebody lesser than other, pers other gender. But now when I am in real world, in real politics, I feel it is not as easy as uh, for men it is. So, of course, women have to talk a little louder than now. What is the biggest difficulty? What is the biggest difficulty for a woman to make her, ma her mark in politics? See, I feel women are judged a lot. That is the biggest difficulty. If you see a man delivering speech, you will, uh, you will wonder how, kitna, you know, how... Uh, progressive speech, how straightforward, how, you know, the uh, 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 whole body language. And if woman talks with that 
all the gestures which are acknowledged and praised in a man, they judge her. They say, oh, she is very aggressive. She is very uh, rebel. She is disobedient. I am none of that. I am just myself, which any other man is in this world. But because I am a woman, they judge me a little bit more. Okay, that's, that's a very, very mind. bold, straight, frank answer. Praniti Shinde, uh, you know, on this panel, three of you are, uh, are daughters of politicians. And therefore, the question will ar arise, is that what gives you the soft entry and makes it easier for you than, let's say, a Mayavati or a Mamta Banerjee who didn't have any such lineage but had to make it in a very male-dominated world? Was it easier because you were Sushil Kumar Shinde's daughter to make a mark in politics? Um, I wouldn't lie. I think it is. It, you have a free pass when you're uh, someone's daughter in, polit uh, in politics, uh, whether you're the daughter or the son, or you have a free pass when it's your first election. But uh, we live in a democracy, which is a very healthy, thriving democracy. And again, uh, it takes a lot for a woman to prove herself. So then when you win the second election and the third election, and that's when people realize, okay, she's serious about her work. And then um, I feel it's your work that counts and work speaks more than anything else. But you definitely, I think, have a, a, a bit of an advantage if you're born in a political family. But at the same time, there are so many expectations when you're born in a political family. You get compared to uh, the person who got you a free pass. And that means there's double pressure as well, because there's comparison all the time. So in compared to somebody in comparison to somebody who's you know who doesn't have a background he's he's not so much in the public glare as as much as we are and then there's always a comparison so we are always 24/7 uh, we're at work and we're there to prove ourselves and we have to be in the constituency and answerable to everybody more than somebody who doesn't have a background so you're judged both as a woman politician and you are judged as the daughter of Sushil Kumar Shinde or the daughter of uh, a Gopinath Munde and Hina, you're an interesting case study because you became an MP at 26 while you were doing your MD exam and you defeated, I think, Manik Rao Gavit, who's a multiple time winner from that constituency. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. What for you, I mean, wasn't being a doctor a nicer place to be in than being in politics? <laughs> well, I think that... Uh now, uh, if you ask me that question, I would say that, yes, it would have been better had I been only a doctor. But yes, of course, uh, uh, getting elected uh, as a member of parliament at the age of 26. And uh, like you mentioned, that uh, contesting against uh, somebody who was a nine-time MP, of course, there were lots of expectations uh, from me. And uh, I had to work, I would say, double than what if... In my place, there was somebody else because uh, if I am contesting at 26 and I'm contesting against somebody who has been a member of parliament for 40 years, then I have to convince how Hina Gavit is better than the other person. So I think, uh, yes, it was challenging, but uh, I got to learn a lot. What's, what's more difficult, being an MBBS doctor, uh, being an MD? Or being a member of parliament? MP now, or MD? What's more difficult? I think now becoming an MP is more difficult because MD, we have a fixed curriculum, we have a fixed syllabus, but for MP, there is no fixed syllabus. We have to work <laughs> 24 by 7 for the people. So but I, you know, she deserves a huge hand. Very few people know to defeat, to defeat the person she did. What, eight-time MP? Nine-time. Nine-time MP is what she defeated at the age of 26, which is quite remarkable uh, for you, Hina. Uh, but you know, when I look at the numbers, Priyanka Chaturvedi, the numbers are heavily weighed against you. At the moment in Parliament, there are about 78 women MPs, which is just about 14% of Parliament. I look at the British Parliament, it's up to 32%. Do you ever really think that we will reach a stage where women will get, forget about 49, 50%, forget reservation, that we will even have 30% of our Parliament will be women? Will we even reach that stage ever or will the men never allow it? Uh, that is exactly what we were discussing at lunch. Every time asking a woman, has she, uh, is she getting the raw deal? It's very important to have men having this conversation that how many seats are you willing to let go to have women in your place? So that is a very important question to have. This entire onus of more representation, etc. Of course, I can give you experiences. We are all sharing our experiences. But it's also important to hear the other gender, how much are they willing to let go? Every time I talk about a reservation, 
even if it's not been passed in the parliament, they're like, Tum hamari nokri khatre mein dal rahi ho, Priyanka. why are you talking about a 50% reservation? I said, because we're 50% of this country. So I will ask for that 50% reservation if you haven't been able to provide that to us. But I am always hopeful and I'm hoping that uh, political parties are realizing, and I must tell you why they're realizing that it is important to have women representatives, because women are coming out in larger numbers to vote and make their vote count. So it has become an entire constituency in itself to have women in political parties playing important roles. So I'm definitely hopeful that there would be more representation in times to come. Let, let's do a poll. How many people in this audience believe we should have 33% reservation for women in assemblies and in parliament? That's not, well, that's about almost all. How, you know, it's interesting they'll raise their hands here. But if this was a gathering of politicians, you can be sure none of them would raise their hands. Or they would pretend to raise their hands and then not go ahead with it. But I want to ask you, uh, uh, Pangaja, taking off from that, is there a women's vote bank? Priyanka made an interesting point. More and more women, the last election saw for the first time more women in India voting than men. And do you believe that politicians have realized women vote bank is there? Will Mahilas vote for a Mahila? Do they vote for a Mahila or do they vote for whoever is the best candidate? I feel it should be the, they should vote for the best candidate. It, that will be fair. Because I am not uh, going to judge the candidate on the uh, gender uh, based, you know. But uh, women vote bank is a very, very strong vote bank. And all the men are eyeing on the women vote bank. Means all the men are also planning their strategies looking at women vote bank. All of us, all the politicians, because the decisions they are taking, the, uh, the schemes they are designing, they are mostly now, if you see this whole decade, all the schemes are women-centric. Uh, right from Beti Bachao to Women Empowerment, lot of things are women-centric and that is a big vote bank. So convincing women is something different and voting for women is different. I feel everyone should vote for the good candidate. You know, but do women speak out enough, Praniti? I mean, we've had the terrible Bilkis Banu case, for example, where her rapists and murderers have been remitted. Uh, their sentence has been remitted. Why don't I see more women coming together and saying enough is enough at, across party lines and saying we are not going to accept this? You know, why, why is, just as there is a women's vote bank, can women politicians come together, form a coalition of women uh, politicians? Possible? Yeah, I think it is because even when we're in parliament or when we're in the uh, assemblies, we all across party lines come together over various issues, whether it's reservation, whether it's the Shakti bill which was passed in the Maharashtra assembly. We've come together, uh, we come together, of course, we have to speak louder than the men to be heard, to make our mark, but um, and more often than not, when we're speaking against uh, something that is supported by the people in power, it's, it's, a, it's questionable how much of us are heard or how much of us are taken seriously. So I think that is an important issue here. Because just yesterday there was a controversy in Maharashtra, and you know what I'm talking about, where women are getting objectified by the government in part. And then the moment we speak against them, uh, they try to silence our voices. They silence voices of the common woman. Where, uh, uh, of, of, they're trying to silence voices of people's representatives. So imagine the misery of the common woman. No, are you saying woman, that the male politicians don't take a woman seriously in politics? Uh, they never do. You have to prove your point. You have to make your mark. You have to work very hard to make to, to tell them that we're serious about what we're doing. It's, it's, there's a mental block, and not just in politics, but I'm sure most women here would agree as well. In the, you said women make really good politicians. I would say women make really good career women. Women make very good leaders. But there's a mental block against a, accepting a woman as a leader in everywhere. It's a society issue. And I think all of us need to oppose this together. So, as a woman politician, it's very difficult for us to survive. It is the survival of the fittest. We have to speak louder. You know, Pankaja gets tagged, I get tagged for being aggressive, but we have to be assertive and aggressive to make our presence felt in politics. Yes, Priyanka, you wanted to add? Uh, I have uh, two small points to make uh, with regards to the Bilkis Bano uh, issue. It was a woman member of parliament who's challenged this in the Supreme Court. That's one, of them, one, one of them, one of them who's, Mawa Moitra is one of them. One of the many petitioners. But you have to give her that credit. I will talk about the Bully by Suli deals. 
that happened, which totally objectified women from the minority. They, they embarrassed them, they tried to undermine them, they tried to humiliate them. And it was me who spoke to the commissioner, Mumbai police commissioners, kept speaking about it till the IT minister took note of it and ensured that this was done. However, when you talk about women speaking across political parties, unfortunately, when I entered the parliament, my idea was that I'll get women members of parliament to rise above their politics and speak about gender-based issues, specifically gender-based, irrespective of our politics. For us to actually address this issue, we have somehow not been able to get everybody on board. So that is our reducing ourselves to our political narratives. You know, the flip side, of course, is that, you know, women are told you handle health, women and, women and uh, uh, child welfare. These are your departments. You can't deal with defense. You know, defense is a male portfolio. Nirmala Sitaraman has broken a ceiling. Finance minister is now a woman. Sushma Swaraj, was Sushma Swaraj became a uh, foreign affairs minister. Indira Gandhi, congresswoman will remind us of Indira Gandhi every time you speak about Nirmala Sitaraman. Uh, but Hina Gavit, is it true that there are certain departments that are seen that this department is reserved for It used to be earlier, but now, you, like you only mentioned, that defense, supposedly a male-dominated field, has had women uh, ministers leading that. Finance, a very important portfolio, is uh, with a women minister. So I think slowly that trend is changing now. And so-called that stamp that this department only a male can lead, I think that is now slowly uh, You don't agree? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, Pangaj, you actually, first. When I was given ministry, women and child welfare ministry was mandatory to give it That to was me. your first ministry. But I got rural development, water conservation. So that was a very good opportunity for me to prove rural development was never given to a woman ever in the past. So I felt it was a challenge for me to perform uh, how much I could in that ministry. But as she said, there is uh, the everything is changing. People are accepting defense, uh, finance, and uh, external affairs. These portfolios were given to uh, women. Of course, our uh, country was run by a women prime minister. We have a women president. But my question is, this will change the look of the decision maker who is giving those decisions. But will this really change fate of common women? is the biggest fight we are going to that's, face. That's a big question. Priyanka Chaturvedi, you come from a very male-dominated party. When I look at the Shiv Sena, I mean, the imagery of the Shiv Sena is very machismo. I mean, that was its, at least its, its sort of early years were very, very male-dominated. Do you feel, honestly, a fish out of water? Absolutely not. Uh, as far as the local bodies are concerned, we have over 50% women candidates who have won, who have been mayors, deputy mayors, uh, have important positions. In fact, uh, in the, in the uh, 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 legislative council, we have a, a woman vice uh, uh, chairperson. So uh, this, is a, this is another thing. And uh, when we come back to this argument, oh, it's a very male-dominated party, the first leader after perhaps Sri Rahul Gandhi would have been uh, uh, Uddhav Thakre ji, who spoke on the podium, on the Shera rally, making it about Bilkis Bano and making people realize that a government which cannot respect its women cannot do justice to the role that they're playing. So I, I totally dismiss this charge and the largest chunk of supporters that we are getting are women, uh, you know, uh, women citizens of the state who are supporting the government, uh, the government which fell. And just to, you know, just a cheeky response to what they said, uh, they said women are breaking barriers and they're they going beyond the decided roles. I think this unconstitutional government has done away with women totally. There is no woman in the cabinet. They have given the responsibility of women and child welfare to Sri Lodha ji that you let allow us to handle it. I mean, he'll be doing a better job of it perhaps. So they've done, the, they've, they've made changes like she said. There are changes happening. So this unconstitutional government has shown that they can do run a government. The biggest state of, uh, uh, you know, amongst the second biggest state in India can run without a woman in the cabinet. You know, but do women have to also conform that if you are in politics, you're going to have to dress a particular way, look a particular way, particularly in your public uh, appearances. You can't be, in, in that sense, you have to be a conservative woman in terms of your dress, if not your attitudes in terms of, is that true or not? That you can't, you know, you, you are very conscious of your public appearance all the time. Is that true? Yeah, so, um, 
I think uh, what you're saying is absolutely right because uh, Pankajatai just mentioned that women are being judged. So irrespective of what we think, how we work, sometimes how we dress up becomes a talk of the town that, oh, she wore this and she came to the parliament. Oh, she wore this and she went to a public function. So I think that, you know, that mindset has to change. So uh, I absolutely, uh, you know, agree. And see, now we are all dressed in Indian dress, this, this dresses. We could have wore a jeans and T-shirt. But yes, we have to, when we go to any formal function, we have to dress up in a particular, uh, you know, way. And I think my colleagues will also agree to that. You know, because I remember during the women's reservation bill debate, Sharad Yadav had said, ye parkati mahila hain. Sab parkati mahila aayengi, short head women will enter. So you would have been Priyanka Chaturvedi for Sharad Yadav, a parkati woman. You know, short head. Unhone, but I, you know, that's, there are stereotypes in a way that still exist. Is that changing in parliament? Do you really see it changing? Be honest, because we don't know what, what happens in your committees and your meetings. Do they still look at you? No. As ye Priyanka Chaturvedi kahan se aagai? Haan, wo to khair sabhi poochte hai. Why just the politicians ye kahan se aagai types? But uh, no, I think that mindset is changing quite a bit in terms of, except for we had one incident yesterday where a journalist, a woman journalist happened to ask Sambhaji Bide ji a particular question and he said, tum bindi nahi lagati ho, to main tumhara sawal ka jawab nahi dunga. So we have moments like these, but we women are taking that head on, we are fighting. So when a chief, chief minister, sitting chief minister of Uttarakhand had said, ye rib jeans wali mahilayen kabhi bhi achhi maa nahi ho sakti hai. So I wore a rib jeans and I said, boss, I am a good mother, I am a good politician and you don't judge me on the basis of my rib jeans. It was just a matter of time before he had to step down. So the point is that till you don't push those barriers, till you don't push that male-dominated thought process, we are going to continue to confine ourselves. Why should I confine myself to what Sharad Yadavji thinks of women with short hair? I have short hair. I'm happy with it. Live with it. No, I, I, I also think we live in two different Indias. There's a rural India which, which I represent. So it's a little difficult for people to accept uh, you know, say ripped jeans or whatever, but I think that that mindset, like she said, should change. We are somewhere succumbing to the fact that people will not like us in jeans in the constituency that we represent. But again, it's a question of mindset until all of us speak. Why are we always looked at upon, I mean, looked at the way we dress? Why can't people start looking at women beyond that? Why can't we be looked at for what we do and the work we do? And I feel that is changing slowly but surely. And like Priyanka Gandhi, uh, a couple of years ago, she entered in trousers and a shirt in the, in, in the parliament house. And there was a big hoo-ha about it. But I think somewhere, all of us across party lines, if we... I think we should start the change, you know, and that's what, let's You should have all come to the program in, in ripped jeans. jeans. <laughs> all four of you would have come to this program in I ripped know, jeans. I think we should all see uh, basically there is a formal attire in every country sure. about certain programs. So this is our formal attire. But if you, I go to my office so many times wearing jeans, t-shirt, track pants, I go from my gym straight. So I'm, I got people used to me, uh, seeing me in for uh, uh, Western outfits also. Of course, I'll wear decent clothes because that's how I am brought up. That doesn't have anything to do with what I am. People should not judge you uh, uh, on what you're wearing. But definitely in this country, people accept bad character men, but not a good-dressed woman. That is surprising and shocking and sad. You know, we've just got a couple of minutes, and I'm going to ask you this question because... Before we started off, I had told Hina about how Mamta Banerjee once told me that he, she had to be aggressive because that's the only way the men in her party would take her seriously as this party supremo. And Hina agreed and said, Naitarte amala khaun zatil, which, means, which only in Marathi you will understand, which means they'll finish us otherwise. Uh, given that, I want to ask all four of you, do you have a role model woman politician in India Someone whom you really admire. You start, Hina. Role, it could be a male model, uh, it could be a male politician or a female. Is there someone you really admire? But preferably a woman. Who is that one woman politician you say and say, wow, that's the way a woman politician should be? Uh, so women politician, if you ask, I would say Sushma ji, Sushma Swaraj ji. She 
is somebody I really admire. And when first time I became a parliamentarian, I went to the library and used to study her speeches also because she used to speak wonderful. The way she used to work, I think she is one role model that I, if you ask a women role model, and if you ask me uh, in general, I would say it's my father because whatever I have learned is from him and I really uh, follow him. So, okay. Yeah. Pankaja Munde, who's, the, who's your role model woman politician? So only woman politician, I have to say. You uh, tell me male and woman. See, I always feel uh, there is no leaderess. It is always a leader. So it leader should be not gender. Okay. We will have to achieve that state. But I always admired Atal Bihari Vajpayee. I had at home only Pramod Mahajan Gopinath Munde. So if I say their name, but how, what I have become today is what I've learned from my father, definitely. But as she said, I'll second that because Sushma ji, as, as a child, I've grown up seeing Sushma ji and I, she was my role model. Still today, I really feel I want to be like her. Because it's not only about a politician, the kind of person she was, the orator she was, how she's, uh, what she did for party. I've really seen her journey very closely and I really want to be like her. That's what is role model. You okay, so you like could, her. you hopefully could become external affairs minister <laughs> one day as a result. Priyanka Chaturvedi, who's your role model woman politician? So, um, it would sound very cliched, but I have grown up watching her and wanting to be like her and imbibe her values and the aggression that she had would be Indira Gandhi ji. Indira so Gandhi. I, I don't have two thoughts in my mind whenever I think of uh, any woman who inspired me when I was growing up and wanting to be like her, to be in politics and break that entire barrier of, you know, women in politics. And the second would definitely be Sushma Suraji with the way she used to speak, the way you sh she used to conduct herself. I think it was, and every challenge she was willing to take uh, her way. So those are two people, but Indra Gandhi ji by far, because my, a lot of how I've seen her has inspired me to do more. Okay. Praniti Shinde. Goes without saying it, Indira Gandhi, because I think today, especially in today's, uh, day, she's so relevant in today's age because she was a leader of the masses and she mingled equally well with international leadership as well. She took some stunning decisions for the country due to which we are where we are now. And we today, I think we need a leader like her. Uh, you know, she was, she's, she's inspired all of us across party lines. And of course, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, for the struggle that she went through, the pain that she went through, she got the party together in spite of what she went through. That's, um, that's commendable. And of course, uh, my father, because, the, because of, you know, he, he, he still teaches me that it's the survival of the fittest and you have to sort of keep going to reach where you are. So, but yes, Mrs. Gandhi for sure, and um, we miss her leadership. I, I thought one of you would at least name Mayavati, Mamta, or Jai Lalita, because these were these were I, the three these were the three women are, yes. politicians I have seen who know how to put men in their place. I I really am so no, I uh, actually just kept of, out of my mind. I, I also sorry. like Jai Lalita ji when I went for uh, her funeral just to take her darshan because I was so even her fight. See, every woman has a very tough story. So if you could. You asked us name one, but even they are heroes of today. I, whatever party lines, they are all. Heroes. Okay, <laughs> we'll leave it there. I only hope that we have many more such role models and many more women reaching the very top in politics. We only have one woman chief minister at the moment, and that's a statistic that is simply not acceptable for a country where women are. I can tell our viewers we have the highest percentage at the moment of women pilots compared to men anywhere in the world and that's reason to celebrate hopefully one day we can celebrate and say we have the highest percentage of women politicians MPs and MLAs compared to any other part of the world that's the future women are the future of this country thank you all very much for joining us here on uh, this very special show thank you